Good evening, folks. My name is Mike Dobbs. I'm managing editor for Reminder Publishing, and welcome to a city council debate here on Focus Springfield. Right now, we're going to be looking at the Ward 6 race between Victor Davila and Tim Ryan. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on board. Okay, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to give you a chance, a one-minute introduction, and then I'm going to ask uh, three questions. It'll be the same question for each of you. And then you both will have the opportunity of asking two questions to each other with 30 seconds of rebuttal time. So first of all, uh, Victor, could you give an introduction for a minute about who you are and why you're running? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mike, and thank you to the uh, Springfield Focus and to you, the viewer, for watching this debate. My name is Victor Davila. I am running for the Springfield City Council Ward 6. I live on East Dalvo Street with my wife, Sonia, and my two poodles, Rocky and Romeo. I'm also the president of the Forest Park Civic Association, a small business owner where we transport the elderly and the handicapped to medical appointments. I'm also a minister of the Eucharist at Holy Name Church. I know the issues on Ward 6, whether it is speeding on the side streets, whether it is blight, litter, or trimming the trees, I know the issues. I want, I'm running for the City Council Ward 6 because I want to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Tim? Good evening. Tim Ryan. Um, I've had the plever, pleasure and the honor of serving uh, 12 years as a Springfield City Councilor. I did 10 years from 1994 to 2003 and then the last two years. Uh, I'm running for the Ward 6 seat as I'm a lifelong resident of Springfield, or of, excuse me, of Forest Park, and my wife and I, Maureen, have raised and educated five children. Uh, also in Forest Park. Um, as a city councilor, I'm very concerned and, uh, and devoted to making the city better, to making sure we have a better police force, to uh, spurring economic development, both downtown as well as in the neighborhood, uh, tackling and fighting blight issues. As a private attorney, I've worked on uh, significant uh, receiverships, cleaning up uh, the bottom of Fort Pleasant and Belmont Ave, uh, working on the Long Hill uh, cond condominiums. It was 212 units that were turned around, uh, and I worked as a private attorney on helping make that happen. Uh, but as a lifelong resident of Forest Park, uh, I realize I know the potential, and I want to make and work with the city to ensure that we have a better, stronger, uh, happier neighborhood. Thanks very much, sir. Okay, so let's get into the... Um into the questions, and once again, uh, these are going to be one-minute replies. And since I went with Victor first, I'll go with you, Tim, first. In your opinion, what is the most important issue that is facing Ward 6, and what would you do to address that issue? Um, it's quality of life issues. Uh, Ward 6 has quality of life issues, whether it's litter and blight, um, whether it's abandoned buildings. And we, we've, done, we've taken some steps. We've got rid of some big blocks. There were still blocks that need to be done. Uh, I was involved with the rehab of the bottom of Belmont and Fort Pleasant. We have to go back and do the middle building. Um, but we have to continue to deal with the blight uh, in the housing stock. It's multifams as well as single fams um, because that impacts the neighborhood, that impacts the residents on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but it's a blight and also to ensure that it's a safe neighborhood. Generally it is, but there are pockets that have real problems, and we just have to work with the police to make sure that these issues are being concentrated, focused on regularly, daily, uh, so that there's safety in the neighborhoods in addition to clean up the blight. Thank you, Tim. Victor, what do you think is the most important issue for the ward? Yeah, uh, quality of life is, of course, the biggest issue. Uh, blight, it's a terrible problem that we have in Forest Park, uh, where there's the actual blight of the housing and also the leaders on the street. Uh, we need to do a couple of things. Uh, one, hold the absentee landlords accountable. Many people live in this uh, that own properties and rent uh, properties in the city don't live in the city. So we need to make sure that they are held accountable. We need to increase home ownership in the, the city, in Forest Park and in the city altogether. That will also help the, improve the quality of life. 
Okay. In Springfield, in oh, Springfield, <laughs> sure. Uh, and we also need to educate, and the city, uh, the city government needs to reach out to people. There's a lot of people out there that don't know they can call Springfield 311 to get their concerns addressed. So the city also needs to reach out, be more accessible to the to the residents. And as a city councilor for Ward Six, I will be accessible uh, and attentive to, to your needs. Thank you very much, Victor. Uh, Tim, in your answer, you talked a little bit about economic development, which is one of my questions for both of you this evening. We've seen an enormous amount of econo economic development focused on downtown with the rehab of Union Station, MGM, and, um, of course, the railroad, railroad company, which is not downtown, but uh, located not far from it. What would you like to see in Ward 6 in terms of economic development? Are there specific things that you would work toward to see happen there? Well, so <laughs> the only area that would have economic development, you know, principally Ward 6 is the, the residential homes, but the area that has business would be the Belmont Ave corridor as well as the X. And there's some very strong local businesses that we all patronize and uh, are, are greatly appreciated in that neighborhood. There's some chains that, to speak to Victor, they're more... They're more an absentee, and we've got to get them better involved. We've got to get them better attentive to their duties in the neighborhood. But through the city, there are outreach to them, but we have to continue to work with them. We have uh, Tim Sheehan, the new economic development director, but continue to work with the small local businesses to make sure that uh, they have what they need to expand, to thrive, and be successful. Okay, Victor, what would you support for economic development? Uh, the backbone of any economic, whether it's in Springfield or anywhere in the world, is small business. We as a city have got to do a better job of fostering small businesses, particularly small uh, mom and pop uh, shops. In Forest Park, we have a lot of spaces um, that, uh, is, whether it's Lower Belmont Avenue, whether it is near Tiffany and Dickinson Street, whether it is Belmont Avenue, uh, um, up by um, Commonwealth Avenue, there's a lot of spaces there. Some of them are thriving. Uh, I think of um, Montezuma right now, for example, that is thriving, is doing very well. Some of the Vietnamese right restaurants, but we need to, we have more work to do. And so, but one thing is sure, that in order for these businesses to come onto the city, for them to thrive, they need to feel safe. So we need to continue uh, to work with the police department. I've been attending sector H meetings, the C3 community, uh, community policy meetings, and uh, I myself uh, have a lot of public safety experience, which would be critical uh, in the city council. All right, uh, gentlemen, my final question for you before you can ask questions of one another. Um, the X is the subject of a major um, reconfiguration. And I'd like to get uh, your opinions. We'll go with Victor first about what do you think of that reconfiguration? Uh, do you think it's going to help business development? Is it going to help pedestrians? Is it going to help traffic congestion? Uh, sure, thank you, Mike. Uh, before I answer your question, Mike, I do want to say uh, to a point that you had before about economic development, uh, you mentioned the Union Station. Uh, one thing that I believe that we need to work, and I do foresee myself doing as a city councilor, is the Union Station is being subsidized on a yearly basis by the city of Springfield, $500,000. We need to work with the state to pitch in money for this, uh, for this venue, for the uh, Union Station, which is a critical transportation hub here in Springfield. And I do look forward to working with my friend, uh, Eric, my Senator Eric Lesser, into bringing more money to, to, to the area. So specifically to your question about the X development, it's going to help ease the traffic in, in the area. It's going to be safer for the pedestrian. Uh, we have parts that is too dark. Uh, it's going to have better LED light, and it's going to be beautified. So it's going to be a huge positive development in Forest Park. Tim, what is your opinion of the proposed changes to the X? Uh, I strongly disagree. Um, the proposed development would widen Sumner Ave from Churchill Street running east back through the X to about Pomona Street, and it would re widen it five feet on each side and would, would cause the removal of dozens of, of large and uh, mature trees, uh, and they would replace them with something that's about as big as that. Um, and then it becomes just a speedway so that people who live in the suburbs can get home quicker. For those of us who live in the neighborhood, it doesn't do anything to improve our quality of life, um, and it just makes it become, you know, the, the Sumner 500. Um, what I want to do, and I have an order, and I talk to... Um, 
Chris Signoli, and so we're holding off, but we have to scale that down, shutting down Belmont Ave and routing traffic over Burlington Street, routing traffic over Ormond Street, uh, secondary roads, to my mind, is a half-baked solution. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, right now is the part of this debate where both of you will ask two questions of one another, and there'll be a 30-second time for rebuttals from the other candidate. So, Victor, do you have a question for Tim Ryan? Uh, I do. Um, uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, Attorney Ryan, uh, my question to you is, why have you decided to leave your a large seat to run in Ward 6, and how do you think you will, better, you will be better able to represent the citizens uh, and the residents of Ward 6? Victor, um, my family goes back three generations. My grandfather was there. My father raised 11 children there. I've raised five children there. Um, I have ties and connections to the neighborhood that go back quite literally generations. It is home. Um, and Forest, I grew up on Forest Park Ave. I mean, how much more could you get to uh, a tie, an anchor to the neighborhood? I have great memories, great fondness for Forest Park. I have great memories and great fondness for so many areas of this neighborhood, and it'd be a great honor to represent this neighborhood in which I was born and raised um, and try to improve the quality of life issues that we both recognize and we both admit are there. And I think I have the experience to collaborate with the mayor and the others to okay. make these things happen. All right, Victor, you have a 30-second rebuttal for that. Uh, 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 yes, thank you, Mike. Uh, absolutely, Tim. You, your legacy goes way back then, and it's very honorable. However, the truth is that by you leaving the city council at large, we now in Ward 6 have less representation and less uh, councillors in the city council to speak up for us. Uh, I've been doing the job. I've been going to C3 meetings. I've been going to Sector H meetings. And honestly, Tim, it hasn't been not until recently that I've seen you show up at these meetings. Uh, where I have been doing this. I am a regular guy. Okay. I'm there for you. Thank you. Okay, Tim, you get to ask a question of Victor. Victor, um, one of the issues that it's been six months now, it's been stalled at the city council level, is the Cid Civilian Police Review Board ordinance. And this would create a professional Civilian Police Review Board, give the subpoena powers, and allow the Civilian Police Review Board to hear disciplinary cases. Um, it's been stalled. It hasn't come to a vote. Are you going to vote for it and make it happen, or are you going to uh, obstruct the, uh, the issue? Well, Tim, I don't know if I would say obstruct, because I'm sure, as you know, both as an attorney and as a city council, that there's currently a law on the books right now. The city council has already spoken twice on this issue, and they passed an ordinance that there's a police commission on the books. Uh, so we need to... Uh, respect the process, we need to respect the principles, but the law in the book right now is that we have a police commission. Okay, Tim, you've got 30 seconds as a rebuttal. Yeah, just on that, I mean, the, the city solicitor has deemed it uh, not effective, and so unless somebody goes to court, you have, you have this uh, stalemate, and so the Civilian Police Review Board ordinance is to get past the stalemate and actually get us to where we need to be. Okay, so now we go into our final section here where we're going to have one more question from each. So I believe, Tim, you're asking a question of Victor right now. Yeah, Victor. Um, one of the issues, one of the things that causes me great concern is the, the attitude in City Hall where it's kind of split into camps. And uh, if we're going to run a city and the successful cities, there's a, there's a collective, a collaborative view, a collaborative aim, collaborative goals. Um, what are you going to do and how are you going to work with the various players to make sure that the collaborative goals are achieved? If I understand correctly, uh, Tim, you're asking me how I'm going to work with everybody in the city council. Well, as you know, unfortunately, our city nowadays, it, in this election cycle, there's a lot of contention going on. I do believe that a true leader, a true leader, listens to people, talks to people, hear what the concerns are, and that's what I bring to the table. I have very good listening schools. I will work and listen to all the other 12 city councilors. I will definitely work and listen with the mayor. I will definitely work with the city solicitor. But at the end, most importantly, I will work and listen to you, the mm -hmm. residents of War 6. Okay. Tim, do you have a rebuttal for yeah, that? Yeah, and I just, it's just to highlight my, my very real concerns that the, the city right now, city government is dividing into camps, and it's 
Camp A versus Camp B, and I think we need the 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 team Team Springfield and to work to make the city objective, the city goals realized. And my concern is that there's not enough people who are willing to pull together to achieve those goals. Okay, Victor, you ask a question for Tim. Sure, uh, I'm gonna ask the question and uh, uh, Tim, and, and it's very good about the, 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 it's important to work with everybody and in the city council, of course, and it's something that I will do. And we both seem to have big, big difference with the police commission. Uh, so my, my concrete question to you, Attorney Ryan, is in 2017, you campaigned for the return of the police commission. The council, as I stated, has now voted in favor of, of it twice, making the law on, of, in the books. This year, you suddenly flip-flop and now support the previous system. Why did you flip-flop on the council? Um, excuse me. You flip-flop and you, and you support the current the, the system that is being proposed. So why did you flip-flop on this uh, on the police commission? Um, I, I didn't flip-flop. I'm the last civilian police commissioner, or one of the last civilian police commissioners mm -hmm. in the city. Um, but it became very clear that this was not going to be achieved. And unless the city council was willing to go to Superior Court and sue the mayor, that this was not going to be resolved. And we're really fighting over names, whether we're going to call it a review board or we're going to call it a police commission. At the end of the day, the mayor has all the appointments of the Civilian Police Commission and all the appointments of the police commission, as well as the appointment of the chief. So we're, we're fighting over names okay. in achieving little. I think we're definitely fighting a little more than names here, my friends. Uh, as you know, Attorney Ryan, uh, the city council passed the ordinance twice. It is the law of the land. You're absolutely correct. The mayor does have the ultimate appointing authority. But also, the mayor also has the obligation, the legal obligation, to enforce the books in the law, which you know very well to be the case. So. Uh, this is not about calling, saying potato or potato. This is about is. following the it process. Is. I completely disagree, uh, Councilor Ryan, uh, Attorney Ryan. This is about following the process because we are setting a very dangerous precedence here. We need a process. We need to stick by the law. I am willing to work with the mayor on this issue, but we need to follow the law, the, which I believe the mayor will agree. Gentlemen, unfortunately, that's our time. <laughs> I know that we could go longer. Yes, indeed. Um, I want to thank both of you thank for you. doing this because educating the voters, letting the voters know where you stand is, is an essential part of our democracy. So thank you very much for coming here and speaking with one another and speaking with me. <laughs> Folks, stay tuned. We're going to be having the at-large candidates coming up uh, at 715. <laughs>